everyone welcome to another beans bag and honey crafts co uh tutorial um i have this new mic don't laugh at me i know i look like a 90s pop star this way but um yeah after my old microphone went i got this one and it's just going to really help with uh, my tutorials because it's wireless it's hands-free and i can keep it on my head and not worry about forgetting to hook it back up to myself so this is what we're going to try for now anyways today we are going to make the Brisa bag by Shambella Designs. This is an older pattern. I have made a many, a many of these bags. I love this pattern so much. Um, it's minimal pieces. Um, it's an adventurous or boisterous beginner, I would say. The hardest part is actually this oval bottom, but during this tutorial, we found a way to overcome that. So um, it makes it not so hard at all. So let me show you some of the features of this design. It's got these decorative um, connectors, which I have used Giardini edge coat on. Um, in the video, I am doing the option for the raw edge connectors, the vinyl or self-healing fabric bag. Uh, I've never made this one in any kind of fabric, but you definitely can. There's instructions all through the bag on how to do that. So. What I like about this is its shape. It's so unique. It almost looks like it's a pillow. It's awesome. So the sides here, it can expand out more. You can undo these and it gives it a whole new shape again, which makes it an even larger bag. The inside, it's a large bag. The inside has a zipper pocket. This one here, I added a slip pocket. This is not in the pattern. Uh, this bag I'm actually doing for a client, so she wanted to add in that slip pocket. So slip pockets are very easy to add in. Um, interfacing for this bag, I uh, use uh, Pellon Flex Foam uh, on the exterior pieces and SF101 as my woven interfacing. If you need a source for all those, I do sell them on my web store. I will put the links down below in the description. I am located in Canada and my shipping isn't too bad. So um, if you are looking for that, you can buy them by the meter or by the bolt. It's completely up to you. Um, so that's all down there. All my hardware is from Emmeline Bags, where I get the majority of my hardware from. Um, this one is done in the Emmeline Bags uh, Rex metallic gold vinyl and my lining was just something in my stash and I do not know what it's called I just know it's called blueberry something I don't know who it's from I am terrible that way I probably should have looked at the salvage before I cleared out my garbage but I did not um what else to say about this bag it's domestic machine friendly I mean, I do all mine on my Titan, but um, before I had my Titan, I made many of these on my GQ 2010Q. I think I even made one on my Elna 680 quilting machine. So um, it is completely doable. Uh, this is one of my go-to gifts when I have to come up with a fast sew. You could sew this together in an afternoon easy. Um, what else to say? Yeah, I said I'm using a Tech 70 thread. I used a size 18 needle on my Titan TN 1541S. And again, it's just one of my favorite patterns. So again, thank you, Sammy, for allowing me to do videos on your amazing patterns. And I guess I will see you guys on the other side. Let's get started. So what we're gonna need are rivets, three magnetic snaps, four one inch rectangular rings, I'm going to put strap ends onto my handles. So these are one inch strap ends, your uh, logo or handmade tag, number five zipper and zipper pull, and some scraps of Decaville Heavy or Peltex. Okay, exterior pieces. You're going to need your two lining contrast bands your eight contrasting connectors, your lining and exterior bottom panels, I am also have backed all my cotton pieces with SF101 woven interfacing, your two handle pieces, 
I have cut two lining pocket pieces. Two exterior main panels. Now these will be backed with uh, flex foam as well. I am using Pellon flex foam. Just the sew in kind. And I will be basting this all the way around. I just haven't cut those pieces out just yet. Your two lining main panels. And these are also bought with SF 101. Okay, so now I'm going to take my two exterior main panels and my handles and my bottom piece. I'm going to uh, prep them as you can see here. I've already done my, my handles and I have put foam on the back of my bottom panel, my bottom piece. If you need to try to condense this foam, you could always use a zigzag stitch around the end, but because it's so in foam, um, it has to go right to the end. Okay, so now we have our eight connector pieces. So I'm doing these first because I am doing the raw edge option for this and I'm going to want to edge coat them. So I want to give it time for my edge coat to dry. So take two pieces, put them wrong sides up, a piece of double sided tape. Oh, this is tough tape. And you are going to stick them wrong sides together, matching as close as you possibly can. If they don't match exactly, that's okay. We're going to be trimming them up so they will be a perfect match. Just like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the machine for all of them. We're going to top stitch around this edge with a quarter of an inch seam allowance for all the pieces. So here they are. So you can see mine isn't perfect. Got it all the way around. Choose the side you like the best. And then not, not that very top edge, the short top edge there, but the other three edges, we want to trim it down to about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We want it to end up being about a one inch um, where it's narrowest there, because that's where the rectangle ring is going to go on. So go slow here, cut it nice and round, try to get a good shape. said so these because we're using vinyl you can use vinyl leather or cork for this and the edges are left raw this is option one in the pattern just like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to edge coat these so if you need to see how I do edge coating I do have a tutorial on that I will put it down in the uh, description below and here we go this is all edge coated I use three base coats, a color, and a glossy finish. So that gives us four connector pieces. So now let's prep these connector pieces. Um, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is you could have done this with woven and turned them out after sewing the quarter of inch. You would have put them right sides together, but my preferred method is with vinyl, so I do it this way. Okay, so from the narrower edge, you want to measure down one and three eighths of an inch. And make a mark there. Okay, I'm going to take a small piece of double sided tape again. And just put it about halfway down. Take off the paper backing and grab one of your rectangular rings and line it up with that line. Now you can see I didn't cut them quite narrow enough, um, but I'm gonna make it work. This is where you want it to be as close to one inch as you can. So then you're gonna fold it under. And secure that edge on the back of that with the tape. Kind of smooth it out. Just like that and do that with the other three. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do before I put them on the exterior panels and I wanna mark my rivet spots. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna put three rivets into each of these. So I'm just gonna draw my holes on with a removable or removable ink pen and try to keep them as consistent with one another as you can.
You can also sew these onto the main panel and do another line of stitching, but I, I just rivet them. That's works good enough for me. She has both options in the pattern. So once we figured out our rivet placement, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hand punch and I am going to punch out those holes. This is just gonna make it easier when we go to actually rivet these onto the exterior main panels. So just like that, go ahead and do that with the other three. Okay, so off camera I went ahead and I installed my bag tag. So she has it on the pattern piece here where you put it. So just use that as a guide, it's perfect placement. Now we're also gonna use our pattern piece and I cut a slit where my connectors go on my very well used pattern piece. So I'm just gonna line it up here and take my removable ink pen and draw through that slit, that one inch line, which is gonna be where our connectors are going to be placed. Do the same on the other side, but flip the pattern piece wrong side up and do the same thing. Okay, so if you don't have, if you didn't make your double-sided tape long enough, just add another little piece and you're gonna line the, right where the fold is, where the rectangular ring and the connector are and stick it down to the bag like that. And then I'm gonna take my awl and through those holes that we just punched, well, I was gonna use this hole punch, but I have the wrong end on it. Um, so grab the awl and we are just going to push through those holes and make a hole through the back foam. And then grab your rivet. I'm using uh, the medium rivets from Emmeline Bags here. Stick it through the back. I'm gonna grab a piece of Decoville Heavy, just a scrap piece. Snap a hole into it with my uh, punch. Put that on the post. Then add my cap. And then I'm gonna do this exact same thing with all of the other rivet holes and set them with my rivet press. We use the Decoville Heavy just to keep, um, give it a little extra stability. So we've done it to all four and this is what it looks like. Again, you can sew them on as well if you wanted to and then add the rivets. Um, I went ahead on the back piece and off camera put in my male magnetic snaps on the back side of the bag and now we are going to do the female side of the magnetic snap. So again, we're using our pattern piece. We're going to line it up and we are going to mark the placement for our female magnetic snaps on both sides of the bag or of the uh, front panel here. Just like that. And then install the magnetic snap. So I'm just using my washer to mark where the prong holes are gonna be cut, like so. And then I'm also gonna mark those prong um, holes on our uh, stabilizer here just to get, again, add a little extra stability behind the snaps because they will be opened and closed quite often. And I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and cut those slits through there. You can also use a seam ripper to do this. Just be careful not to go too far, just the length of those lines that we drew. And also cut your slits in your Decoville Heavy or Peltex pieces here. Again, it's the female ones that are going on the front of the bag and the male ones go on the back of the bag. And once it's through all the layers, take your piece of Decoville Heavy, put it over top of the prongs like so, put on your washer, 
And then I use the edge of my table to push my prongs to the center. I know some people push them to the outside. I, I have always pushed them to the inside. I don't know if it really makes a difference. And then I just take my mallet and I just kind of give it a slight little tap there just to make sure they're nice and flat and take a piece of Gorilla Tape or duct tape to put over top of those prongs just so they won't wear on the back of the lining. So go ahead and do that to the other side. Okay, so now we are going to work on the pleats of the front. Again, we're taking this very useful pattern piece and I have cut uh, the little the markings where the pleat markings were and that's just to make it easier to run my pen through them to mark the pattern piece. So go ahead and mark all nine or nine um, lines on each side of the panels. So we've got nine on the left and nine on the right. Again, make sure you're using chalk or an erasable pen here. Okay, so now we're gonna make the pleats, which is gonna give us the bulbous shape of the bag. So the way you do this is you kind of, okay, the ones on the left, we're going to have kind of folding over to the outside of the bag for each side. So the ones on the left to the left and the ones to the right to the right. You're gonna kind of bring the two outside lines together, which makes the inside line kind of at the top and then fold it over upon itself towards the outside of the bag. That's pleat number one. We're gonna do that again with the second one. So we're doing three pleats per side, six pleats in all on each panel. You want to try to get this as accurate as you can because if it's too big or too small, our bottom panel is not gonna fit on here very good. So take your time to make sure that this is good and clip it in place. So you can see there how it kind of gives it a rounded look with those pleats. Now we're gonna do the same with the other side, but we are going to make the pleats go towards the right, so the outside of the right side of the bag. Just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna take this to the machine and we are gonna base them in place there with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on the front and the back panels. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is um, how we get that beautiful shape to this bag. Now you wanna make sure you've marked your centers on your bottom and your top of your main panels. Again, folding them in half and just clipping notches or marking them with a pen, whatever your preference is. So take one of them and kind of make it so it's kind of curving in, I guess, and the other one so it's curving out. That way they're just easier to sew together because they're kind of the same shape. So we are going to be clipping up the left and the right sides here. We're leaving the bottom and the top open. So match up your raw edges of each side. Just like that, you're gonna do the same with the other side. And then we are going to sew with a quarter of an inch seam allowance down both sides. So here we do go, we have a nice big tube. I like to just make sure that my magnetic snaps line up here. Then I know that I was accurate. Okay, so we wanna make sure again that we have our centers. So we're gonna take our bottom piece. This is the hardest part of this whole bag. Um, we wanna find the vertical and horizontal centers of our bottom piece. So again, just fold them in half one way and do small snips within the seam allowance. So like eighth of an inch snips.
And then we want to fold it in half the other direction. And find the center of the curved sides. Again, I like to use snips just because snips don't wash away. You can see them the whole time, but make sure they're small enough. Just like that, so we have our four snips. Now we're going to mark our snips on the bottom of the bag, marking all four centers. Use lots of clips here. And this is the hardest, hardest part of the bag. We get past this, the rest is a breeze. So first clip the two long side centers. And then for the centers on the sides, I am using the one we clipped there and then the center seam here. And if you can pull that seam open just to help reduce the bulk. And do the center on the other side. Pulling that seam open. Now rounder oval bottoms are not the easiest to sew in place at all, but we are going to try a little trick to keep it in place. We, I'll show you what that is here in a moment once we get everything in place. So between the centers, evenly distribute that fabric, uh, avoiding any nips or tucks on the bottom panel. And this is where we're gonna find out if we did our pleats correctly, it is going to fit in here perfectly. So I've made many of these Brisa bags and this is the part that I struggle with the most when I take it to the sewing machine. Usually when I take it to the machine and I am sewing around this oval, my clips are falling off and my bottom panel is coming out of alignment and it's usually just a really big hot mess. I know that some bag makers like to use staples. I have tried that but um, and it worked really well. I just hate having to go back and pull out the staples. I always have a fear that I'm going to leave them in the bag. So once we get this all clipped around, we are going to attempt to hand base this. I am not one that likes hand sewing at all, as everybody knows, but we're going to, once we have it clipped in place, uh, get out a needle and thread, and we are gonna just use really long basting stitches by hand to hold these layers together. And it is just going to make it so much easier knowing that everything is going to stay in place and we won't have to worry about the many, many clips that uh, could get in the way and fall off. And it's just bothersome, trust me, I speak from experience. So I'm happy to say our bottom fits in perfectly, which means we did our pleats to the right size. Um, if it was too big or too small, you'd either have to trim the bottom down, but then you risk having an uneven oval on the bottom or going back and pulling out the basting stitches of the pleats and redoing them. Okay, all those clips is gonna ensure that it's not going anywhere. And now I'm pulling out my needle and thread. Now I'm keeping this within an like um, a scant quarter of an inch because I don't want these threads to show once we sew it on to the bag. So I'm just using really long um, stitches, like maybe half inch stitches, quarter to half inch basting stitches. Probably about the size of each clip as I go clip to clip. just like that. So continue all the way around hand basting it. And this is what we got. And I really think this is gonna work 
fabulously. So now we're going to take this to the machine, put it main panel down and stitch around with quarter of an inch seam allowance. And oh my gosh, look, it turned out so good. So turn it right side out, double check your seam, make sure you caught everything, make sure you're not seeing any of your basting stitches. If you're seeing your basting stitches, you can always pull them out or you can go back and just make a little bit bigger of a seam allowance. And you know what? turned out pretty good. That is definitely the way I am going to do the bottom of this bag going forward. So press out all your seams and just like that the exterior of our bag is done. This bag is so fast to sew together. Uh, you can get it done in an afternoon easily and it just looks like it's super fancy and super nice. So that is what we got. So to give you an idea of what it looks like, we snap it in. It's kind of flimsy right now because it doesn't have the lining in it, but just to make sure that our shape is looking good. And it is. She's looking gorgeous and our bottom seam looks perfect. So there it is. That's the exterior of the bag. Okay, now pull out your two main lining pieces, fold them in half and mark your centers on the top and the bottom. Can I do this just by folding them in half? I already did it on this one. Okay, take your uh, lining contrast bands and do the same. You want to find the centers on the top and the bottoms. Okay, so we're gonna lay out our first panel and this is what it's gonna end up looking like. So we wanna take them and put them right sides together, match up our centers. And you could be brave and not worry about clipping this, but I, I'm always worried about it moving, so I always clip. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch this together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. But while I'm at the machine, after that's done, I'm going to flip it over so the seam is uh, pointing down towards the lining. And then I'm going to top stitch on the lining side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to do that with both lining panels. Okay, this is what it looks like. Top stitch, the seam is going the right way. And we're good to go. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to install our third magnetic snap. So we're once again going to use our uh, pocket piece. She has it marked right on there where it's going to go and you're going to mark where the center of that snap is. You're going to take your washer just like we did with the other two magnetic snaps. Match that circle with the circle on the washer. Draw the two slits where the prongs are going to go. Cut them. Have your, deck, uh, your piece of decoval heavy as well for that extra uh, security behind the snap as it will be opening and closing a lot. And I'm going to install them both on my panels. Okay, so the one with the female snap, that's where I'm going to put my lining pocket piece. Now I'm not going to do that with you on camera. If you want to see how I do that for easy turning, I do have a class for that and I will put that down in the description if you need to know how to do it. 
So this is it done. And as you can see, I left the bottom of that pocket open and that's so we can close up the opening, the turning hole in the bag later on. I also added a slip pocket. This is not part of the pattern, but this is a customer order and she wanted me to add a slip pocket. So as you can see, you can customize it as much as you like. Okay, so now we, it's kind of rinse and repeat. We're going to be doing our pleats on the front and back panels of um, our linings. We're gonna use the exterior main panel piece for this because now that lining piece is the exact same shape and size. We're going to mark our pleat marks and then you're going to do the pleats in the exact same way we did it on the exterior uh, with the pleats going towards the outside of each panel. So that's done, we have the same shape. We are going to now put them together the same way we did with the exterior. It's all the same. Um, the only difference is we are gonna leave it about a six inch or so or five inch opening on the side of the bag. Usually we put it on the bottom of the bag for turning, but because we have a rounded bottom, we don't, um, we don't have that option. So we are gonna make our turning hole on the side. I am gonna just make these marks to give myself that reminder. Now, when you're sewing these sides, make sure that where the contrast band and the lining meet, that they are a nice continuous line. Uh, so make sure you match up those seams so they look nice and lined up from the inside of the bag. We are so close to being done, you guys. This is this is one of the quickest bags I swear to do. It's the only thing that makes it not a beginner bag is that uh, oval bottom. It is just it is just hard to sew. But actually, with the basting, it wasn't. So yeah, I will definitely do it like that going forward. Okay, so again, making sure you match up that that seam so we have a continuous line and on this side we will be just sewing the whole way down you don't need to leave a turning hole on this side we only need it on the one side and you can choose it can be the left side or the right side it's completely up to you now the only thing we're gonna do different besides that uh, hole is we are going to start at a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top, branch out to a half an inch seam allowance in the center, and then back down to a quarter inch seam allowance by the time we reach the bottom of the bag. And then when we have our turning hole, you're gonna go a quarter of an inch, right about here, go out to about half an inch, Backstitch, jump over to the other line, backstitch. You're at a half inch, work your way down to a quarter inch. You can't really see it because my thread's the same color, but yeah, it's a quarter of an inch. I've backstitched, left a hole. We're at half an inch now, backstitch, work my way back down to a quarter of an inch. And the other side, quarter of an inch, branch out to half inch, work my way back down to a quarter inch. That's because you want the bottom and the top to be the same size as the exterior, but doing it this way, it makes it so our lining doesn't end up being floppy inside. So you're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. I am not gonna hand base this. The lining is much easier to do, as you can see. So yeah, I did it. So there's my hole, my bottom is on. Now we're gonna put the two together. So unsnap your snaps from your exterior. Now figure out where your front is. And I like my, I'm, I'm just putting my uh, <laughs> rings out of the way. I like my zipper to be at the back of the bag. So make sure you orientate it however you like it. So put the, the right sides together with the exterior on the inside. Match up your centers. Match up your centers on the back side. I like to do my four centers first just because it's easier to evenly distribute that fabric in between those center marks. 
Okay, and then we're gonna match up these seams. If you can, open up these seam allowances just to make it a little less bulk when we go to top stitch. And same on the other side, open up those seams. And then in between those centers, make sure your uh, rectangular rings are down because you don't want to run over those with your needle. Um, evenly distribute the fabric of the lining and the exterior pieces in between those center marks so you can ensure that you don't have any nips or tucks. This bag comes together so fast. This is one of my go-tos when I need a last minute present for somebody. Um, you can get it done within a couple hours in an afternoon. There's minimal pieces, which is amazing. And the construction is actually very simple. I would say this is a boisterous beginner bag. But it doesn't look like a beginner bag. It is, it is a really, really classy bag and it has a very unique shape, as does most of Shambhala bags. They all seem to have something unique about them, which makes it why I love them. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting this down on my machine and sewing from the inside. We are gonna be using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to sew the seam. So that's all done, 3 8 I'm just making sure that it was caught all the way around. Here's the opening in the side of the bag. You're gonna reach in, grab your exterior, and pull it through that opening birthing the bag. Super easy to birth this bag. Okay, I just like to reach in the hole and just push out all my seams on the exterior. And then push the lining inside the bag. This is a little awkward sometimes, but just stuff her back in. Okay. And then along that seam that we just sewn, you're gonna massage it down and even up that seam. And then I like to use clips just to keep everything in place while I top stitch. It's also a good way as you're doing this just to go and make sure that there are no holes or anything sticking up through that seam because you definitely don't want the top seam to come apart. But I can see all my stitching is here, nothing is separating. Now, when you get to these side seams, they are a little bit thicker. If you have a domestic machine, uh, even if you have an industrial machine, you may want to use a hump jumper here just to make sure you're not tearing up your, uh, your vinyl, which sometimes a walking foot will do. I am not afraid of clips. I love Wonder Clips. Well, these aren't actual Wonder Wonder Clips. These are just like knockoff brand. I lose them all the time. They go flying, but they are just, uh, they're the best tool ever. Wonder Clips and double-sided tape, my favorite tools. Okay, 
And on this seam here too, you may need to, it's another side seam. Um, be very careful when you go over it on a domestic, make sure you're using a hump jumper or if you're worried about uh, your walking foot tearing up your vinyl, use a hump jumper as well. My machine doesn't usually have issues going over those thick seams. There we go, so we have that all nice. So now I'm gonna take this to the machine and top stitch it all the way around with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And there we go. So just going around, making sure it caught everywhere, no holes in the bag. Well, there's this hole in the bag. <laughs> so now what you wanna do is open up your zipper and this is my way of turning the bag. Pull your pocket out where we left the opening in the bottom of the pocket. Reach into the bag through that pocket, find that side hole we left for turning. Grab it with your hand and pull it back through that pocket. It's a little bit awkward, but trust me, it is so worth it. This is how I close all of my birth bags. Okay, so once you have that out, match up the raw edges and clip them together. Again, I've put this link down below how to make the pocket for easy uh, bag turning. And uh, yeah, it's just how I like to do this. The pattern calls for just um, folding over the seams of that side and top stitching it. This way you don't get that ridge um, in the lining. I can never make it look nice. That might just be a me thing, but this way, doing it this way avoids it. You have the ridge in the pocket when you've sewn it, but nobody sees the inside of the pocket. Okay, so take that to the machine and remember we're doing that with a half inch seam allowance because it's on the side and then I'll be stuffing that in and closing up my pocket as well. Okay, so see it's all closed up. I've closed up my pocket. Now how this goes together, um, do up your middle snap, kind of fold these sides in like this and snap together the male and the female snap and push out the sides just kind of give it that bulbous shape. Do the same on the other side. Push out that seam to give it its shape. Then all you have to do is rivet on your handles and we are complete. All right, so we are done and it wasn't that bad. Uh, I said I did this tutorial in an afternoon. It was pretty easy. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, make sure you shoot me an email or leave a comment down below and I will get back to them as soon as I can. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe, please do me a solid subscribe. We're growing fast. Um, when we get to 5,000 subscribers, which we're about 400 away right now, I I think we're 500 or something away. Anyways, I have big giveaways uh, planned for that when we get there. So hopefully we will get there soon. Um, yeah, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, I have linked down below uh, where you can get this pattern. I have linked down below where you can find the interfacing and the hardware. Uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope it was helpful and I will catch you guys on the next one.